Drawing a realistic beard has some very specific peculiarities depending on the reference we're using. In this video, I want to tell you the secrets behind it, which can vary from case to case. Hi, my name is Matheus Macedo, and in the previous video, I talked about how to draw realistic hair using this drawing here as an example. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend it because the principles I'm going to follow are the same. Now, in this video, I'm going to focus on the beard, which can be a little different from what we saw about the hair. So let's go. Just like I mentioned in the video about hair, I sketched this drawing using a combination of the grid and the transfer method. This helped me to find my way around in the drawing, which is in A3 size and full of details. I also said previously that I'm not aiming to make a perfect copy of the photo, but to convey the general idea of a beard, to emulate the texture of a beard. So, one more time, I'm talking about texture more than anything else. Before we start drawing the beard strands, I'm going to use this tool, the embossing tool, or indenting tool, or indenting stylus. Yes, I've seen it being called by many different names. As a non-native English speaker, this confused me a bit, but I'm talking about this tool that is generally used for crafts. Well, I'm going to use it to make more intense white beard strands. We can make white strands using just a razor, but this engraving or indenting technique allows us to make them even lighter. In my case, I'm not going to use this tool to do all the strands. No, I'm going to do most of them, but not all of them, because I want to see a variation of tones among the strands, as I see in the reference photo. These marks made with the embossing tool must be firm, but do not put too much pressure, as this can damage the paper. Speaking of paper, the paper used must be at least resistant, it must be a good quality paper. This technique will not work well on thin printer paper. If you want to improve the quality of your drawings, invest in better materials. I list the paper I used in the description of this video. Using this tool is a little different than what we are used to. Practice on a separate piece of paper first to get used to the feel of the paper, the pressure to be applied, and work on the gesture of the hair strand, trying to start and end them thin. This is important to give the strands a natural look, start and end them thin. After indenting the paper with the embossing tool, we can start shading the skin and tracing the hairs. The mustache area has a more intense shadow, so I used a lot of charcoal here and used the brush to soften the texture. Then I used the eraser to highlight these strands. In the areas where I engraved, I will be able to achieve lighter tones in the strands, while in other areas the strands will be less light, which was exactly what I was looking for, this variation in tones. Most of these highlights were done with the Tombow eraser, but in some case I used the electric eraser. The goal was to get even lighter strands. Here I'm talking about how I made this specific beard, I'm not saying that this is the definitive method for drawing a beard, okay? I've seen artists using white charcoal pencils, Posca pens, or even acrylic paint applied with a brush. All of these methods are valid, but here I didn't want to take any risks because this drawing, as I said, was going to be on the cover of my book, so I wanted to do something safe, something I already knew how it would turn out. Finally, just like I did with the hair, at the end I used a pencil around some strands to give them more definition, since the eraser doesn't always allow for very well-defined strands. So, I use pencils like the one on the screen for a more refined result. By the way, I put some of the materials used to draw this beard in the description in case you want to try the same materials I use. On the cheek, the beard strands are a little longer than those on the moustache and the chin, 
but the process is exactly the same guys. The difference is that I used the embossing tool to make these marks a little longer. Here I chose to spread the charcoal powder with a cotton swab so that the markings would be more visible from the beginning, and it worked. This way I was able to locate myself better and have more control over what I was doing. So basically I did the shading using cotton initially, and the white hairs themselves were used as a reference for me to make the texture of the beard. Actually it was quite fun to do it guys, don't be scared or think that realistic drawing is boring. I saw some artists here on YouTube saying that drawing a beard is a daunting task, that it is boring and so on, and I completely disagree with those statements. By the way, if you think that realistic drawing is a chore and that it makes you bored, why did you choose this style of drawing to practice that doesn't make sense to me? Art is one of the few activities we have to express ourselves and exercise our freedom, so I expect that it is an enjoyable and relaxing activity for us. Enjoy the process and have fun with your art. Summing up guys, when I draw beard and hair in general, I focus on the texture of the reference instead of trying to make a perfect copy. I use the embossing tool to mark lighter hairs if that's necessary. I draw thin strands with the embossing tool and the pencils. I make the strands themselves using a thin eraser. And I seek to have fun with the process, I don't see realistic drawing as a boring task. Drawing realistic hair or beard doesn't have to be super complicated unless you are committed to make a perfect copy of your reference image. That's not the approach I'm looking for, which makes me feel much more comfortable when exploring this topic. By the way, this drawing is on the cover of the book that I'm releasing now at the time I'm recording this video, and yes, in the book I bring a beard exercise showing step by step in detail how to do it, in addition to many other realistic drawing exercises in black and white. I also have an online recording class on the subject, so if you prefer to learn through video lessons, or if you want to have access to these two learning methods, I mean video and textbook, I'll leave the links in the description of this video. I hope this video was helpful, and if you are interested in other parts of this drawing or any other topics on realistic drawing, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next video.